This is one of the most important video in the entire video series of GD extension and I am 100% sure about what I am saying. Because why you want to write code in GD extension? One important reason is because it is fast and you have a low access to memory. In this video we are going to dive in the rabbit hole of the memory in Godot and discover everything about memory in Godot. So watch this video with patient because this stuff is really, really important. Godot uses its own way of managing memory. If you are familiar with C++, you know we can create a memory in heap by new keyword. And if you do that in GT extension, there will be no problem. And Godot will give you no error. Let us, for example, create a node 3D. First, declare a node 3D pointer. Then with the new keyword, just create that node 3D. Very good. Let's print that. Now, if I compile that and run Godot, as you can see, no 3D has been created and there is no problem. But in Godot, it is much better to not use new keyboard. Instead of that, use mem new keyboard. Mem new do a lot of internal stuff which need to be done. Now, if I run again Godot, as you can see, my no 3D is created. Now, if I run another time Godot, take a look at console. It is written that the object instance has been leaked at exit. This is really, really life-saving. So I recommend to run Godot with console when you write code in GD extension. Because when your code becomes complex, a lot of time happens when you forget to delete the object which you have created. And this warning is really helping. Another place which I recommend to look is the debugger memory section. There also print how much memory you use. So if you have somewhere memory leak, you at least know something is wrong. Now how we should delete node 3D. You can use mem delete to delete node 3D. And now if I run Godot, you can see there is no warning again. Okay, we learn how we can create object and how we can delete that. But what if we want to create 100 node 3D? Should we create them one by one? Well, in GD script, yes, but here in C++, we can use the power of the C++ to create them all at once. So the way the standard C++ create, for example, 100 node 3D is this. You can create them with the new keyword and then the name of your class and then the number of the object in the bracket. Then, for example, here I can print them like this. I can grab the first, second and third element by bracket like this. But one thing to note, print function accept only pointer. When you put the number like this inside bracket, it will dereference your pointer automatically. So just take the address of them with ampersand. Now if I run this, as you can see, our node 3D has been created. But this is the C++ way. What is the Godot way? So in Godot, you can use mem new underscore array. Then the name of your class and the number of them. In this case, 100 for example. This will do the same thing and in Godot, it is much better to use this for creating multiple objects. You know creating object this way is much faster than creating one by one. Because when you create object one by one, every time you create object, it is going to search in memory and find an empty memory and then create object there. But this way, it will take the space for 100 node 3D at once and then create all of the node 3D beside each other in memory. This will also help to loop through this object as fast as possible if you need to. Because they are beside each other. Now how we can delete this array? Just call memdelete underscore array and pass the pointer of your node 3D. This is going to delete all of the nodes. One interesting question, how memdelete array know how many node 3D has been created? Because we pass only the pointer to the first node 3D, how it know how much memory to delete? When you call mem new array to create 100 node 3D, it is going to calculate how much space each node 3D need. And then it will occupy that amount of the memory. Well, not just that amount of the memory, it is also going to occupy 64-bit memory before the memory starts. And in that 64-bit memory, it is going to store the length of the array. Let me show you that. If I create an unsigned 64-bit integer pointer, and I assign my node 3D pointer to that, 
of course I need to cast node 3D pointer to this type. Now this refer to the memory at where node 3D created. But I need to grab 64 bit before that. To grab that memory I just subtract one from this. This will give me the pointer at this position. Now if I dereference this memory and print that as you can see it's print 100 or it will print the length of the array. Well that was interesting to know and sometimes this thing is useful. Let's go further and see other memory tool which we have. In C we have malloc, realloc and free. We have the same thing in Godot. For example memalloc do the same thing as malloc in C. What you can do with this is this. You will give this how much memory you need and this is going to reserve that amount of the memory for you and it is going to return to you a void pointer to the start position of that memory. So for example here I want to create 100 integer. First I calculate the size of each integer and then I multiply that with 100. You might ask why I should do this. I can use mem new array to create 100 integer. I will tell you why you need this in a moment, just stay with me now. So right now my pointer has a type of void. But if I cast that to integer pointer, in this case I can work with that much better. Okay done. Now I can access each of these 100 points and change their value like this. Let's print them to make sure they are working. So they are working. To delete this memory, you just need to call memfree. And this will delete the entire allocated memory. What if I want to create 100 node 3D like before? So I can do the same thing which I did with the 100 integer. And at the end of this function, I want to free them. Now this is the main difference between this and mem new array. In mem new array, it will preserve memory for 100 node 3D and also it create 100 node 3D object. But here we just reserve memory for 100 node 3D, but we not create anything yet. And this give us more control over the memory. Maybe I don't want to create all of the object now. I just want to reserve this memory and create them later based on other information. Or I want to create now 100 node 3D, but later maybe I want to create another 100 node 3D in the same memory which I reserved before. This way your program become much faster because reserving the memory and freeing that will take time. And this way you can avoid that. So now the question is this. Okay, I have enough memory for 100 node 3D. How can I create node 3D object in this place? Well, you can use another macro which is called mem new placement. For the first argument, you can pass the memory address which you want to create your object at that position. And for the second parameter, you can pass your class type, in this case, node3d. This will create node3d at that memory address which you provided. And this is really cool. Well, I can initialize at any point in my memory which I like as you can see. Now let's print this. As you can see everything works and we created our node 3D. There is another function which is called memrealloc and that is the same as realloc in C. That is for reallocation of the memory which you already created. For example, make the memory bigger or shrink that which you pass the memory address that you created and the new requested memory space. But please note guys, this amount of control over memory is really really powerful. But it could be dangerous too. For example here, if you want to access node 3D3, your program will crash and sometimes C++ will not provide you with a good error. And you can lose a lot of time to find what is the problem with your program. So use these with caution and double check if everything is okay. Because in this four line of code, everything is clear. But as soon as your program grow and become more complex, it will be very hard to find the problem or the bug in your program. Imagine if you write 2000 line of code and your program crash with some strange error. So I warn you now, use this software is necessary and use them with caution. Very good.
And finally, we have another memory functionality, which also in Goda source code is not much used, and that is mem new allocator. So this take for the first parameter the class type which should be created, and for the second argument you pass an allocator class. Let me show you what is an allocator class. This is a default allocator class which is provided by Godot. As you can see, allocator class has two static member function. One is alloc and one is free. This is a default Godot allocator, but you can also define your allocator if you want. I'm not going to spend time for this one, and I leave this to you if you want to explore this. And that was about memory. If you have any question, just write that in comment section. And I hope this video was helpful to you. Until the next video, have a good time.